So one of the shafts had a massive run out. It's the other one, so I'm gonna mark this number one. We'll measure the run out, which is something like 0 0.2 millimeters. This is not that bad, so let's try the other one. So this will be number two. And now we're gonna measure the run out, which is... Zero point eight millimeters, and this is uh, the run out I I can see with my my eyes. So I'm gonna need a new shaft that's straight. So I got the run out on the second shaft down to 0 0.05 and I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna probably make it worse if I try to make it better. So I got the run out on both of the shafts within 0 0.05 millimeters which is enough. So I'm gonna leave these uh, welt sprockets on and they're, they're finished. And it also means I just saved 186.30 plus shipping. Uh, this is a surface hardened uh, 60 mil uh, shaft, uh, 800 millimeter long. I would have needed one of these. Now I don't have to buy this. Bambo. One down, five to go.
so there will be no assembly today because the paint is still like not tacky but it is soft these will have to cure um, at least a couple of days So while I was waiting for the paint to dry, uh, I took a look at the amphibious vehicle I built. Uh, it had been sitting for a couple of years uh, behind the barn and it got slammed hard with wet snow this uh, winter and it got snowed in. Uh, it melted and created a moisture rich environment uh, inside the hull of the tracked vehicle. So here you can see the corroded engine uh, it's like only on the surface the steel hull itself is uh, okay um, holds water apparently um, so I lifted up the front and now it's draining uh, here you can see the uh, differential I shortened the rear axle of a Lada. Axle shafts inside the axle turned out to be uh, a little too um, small so I snapped them uh, because this uh, track vehicle does not have power uh, braking um, so I had to yank the brakes to uh, get them to uh, engage so uh, this was too much for this differential so now the plan is to replace it with a BMW differential and with uh, power braking and uh, dual or triple caliper uh, brakes so here I am building an A-frame uh, which I can attach to the uh, tracked vehicle and I can manipulate and uh, move it around uh, with my homemade UTV um, I took the tracks off uh, well at least the left one uh, I could access uh, I took it off because the track vehicle is too wide to fit inside uh, the barn through the barn doors so Now I'm just pulling it uh, away from the barn wall uh, so I can get more access uh, to the to the left track of the tracked vehicle. I tried to push and pull the uh, tracked vehicle with my ATV but it was uh, a little bit too uh, light for this job so the UTV is much heavier. Um, and, uh, it moves it. It moves the track vehicle around super easy. Now I'm uh, just admiring my work. It brings back a lot of memories uh, from the year 2020. Here you can see the engine. Uh, a close up from the engine. It, it's a surface corrosion, uh, the engine spins around. I looked inside, there's no corrosion inside the engine, so this is only uh, surface corrosion. There you can see the water on the bottom. Uh, in the future it should, uh, be, it should be parked tilted, uh, nose up, so it can drain properly and it doesn't rust that way. So I'm taking off the other track and pulling the tracked vehicle off the track so I can uh, roll the track up and uh, pack it into the tracked amphibious vehicle.
So I made room in the barn for the tracked vehicle and uh, I just uh, pushed it in the barn and now it waits for its turn uh, to be modified uh, so I can use it properly. Hopefully the timber trailer parts will cure for the next week uh, so I can start assembly on the timber trailer and finish this project once and for all. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.